What's up guys, Quadron here. I am going to be bringing you another episode of How to Dominate with a Mid Hero. Today we are looking at Puck being played by S4 and I am really looking forward to this. I have already seen this game and I this has been a this is a fantastic Puck game. We're going to be looking primarily at, you know, from a noob's perspective, so if you're just starting with Dota, you want to learn how to play Puck, or if you're at an intermediate level and you want to learn how to play him at a more advanced level, this is kind of the guide on how to take you to that next level. So, first of all, let's just go through his abilities really quickly. First ability is Illusionary Orb. It travels for 1800. It gives vision around it, flying vision, so you can see inside of trees uh, in a narrow path around it. Um, it does 280 damage to any units it goes through. Waning Rift does a burst damage magical nuke at 280 and a 400 radius around him. So if I play it, you'll be able to see the radius size. I think it's not going. I think that's because it's going to be on free camera. I don't know why it's not letting me do it, but it's not letting me do it. It's about, it's about this big or so, just right around him, basically. Um, the third ability is Phase Shift. You do a... 0.5 duration or 0.75 duration at level one. It shifts into another dimension. You disappear basically, and there's a little, little pixie dust uh, around you. Uh, notice that's what he just did. If I go back and ha uh, play it again, you'll see Behold. there he he just used a he just used a orb and he jaunted to the orb. So that's one of the, one of the things I didn't mention about the illusionary orb. At any point in time, he can use an ethereal jaunt to get to the orb's location. These are all things that you probably already know unless you're brand new to Dota, but I just want to go over all the basics just in case. Uh, so he's just getting some extra right clicks in. They're both going to salve up here. Um, he already has his bottle, S4 does. Looks like we got a visual glitch. He's not actually bottling this entire time. Uh, that's okay, not a big deal. So he just used another phase shift. Phase shift does not cost any mana. That's really important. So you can use that really, really often to dodge just little attacks and make sure that you don't miss out on any of your, I don't know, extra damage or like towered hits. You can dodge tower hits with it or you'll see just in a moment he's going to dodge a pudge hook. Notice right here, he's almost baiting the hook. He, he Pudge knows that he wants to go for this hook and Puck knows that that's what he can do. Uh, now, because he baited him, like S4 could have been hanging back over here and he wouldn't have been able to hook him, but because S4 came here, Pudge basically took the bait, threw out the hook, missed the hook because of the phase shift. Now Puck has the mana necessary to do a bit of damage with the illusionary orb. Notice the flying vision that the orb is going to give S4. He attacks him. Uh, Ethereal jaunts to the orb's location right here. Notice that the orb is giving flying vision, so he can see inside the tree line right here. Able to get that attack off, gets the kill. Most people would never even think to do that series of actions. Bait the hook, phase shift the hook, throw out the orb. The orb gives you vision through the trees. Throw two attacks in there, get the kill. Like that is some really, really impressive puck play. Now. Puck is coming up the river, decides it's a bad idea, which it was, because Pudge uh, has mana and has, has full HP, which is a very easy kill on a Puck that's low on mana and is not full HP, obviously. So, um, right here, notice Goronob is very mad, alright, about having the face shift bait of his hook. So watch what he does instead. He cancels his animation on his hook so he hits Q for a hook hits H to hold it or whatever his stop button is and cancels the animation and notice Puck falls for the bait he phase shifts right so most people right now would probably in my opinion the smarter move probably would have been to go top and around but at this point I'm not sure if even he would have been able to get away at 285 235 yeah, P basically Puck is probably dead. At this point, what do you do, right? There's very little that you can do. He's getting right-clicked. He probably should not have right-clicked, in my opinion. Um, just stick with him with the rot. Notice what Puck did there. He ate a tree. 
eating a tree is super important here. Um, now Pudge is throwing out a real hook this time. Hits him with the hook. Okay. He phase shifts out halfway through the hook. Uh, that doesn't matter though because he's still, when he comes out of phase shift, he's still next to Pudge. He's on the other side of Pudge now. Like this is pretty much like, you're dead. Sorry, man. Um, takes the right click. He got the bottle uh, before the hook happened. So he bottle charges two charges right now. And on top of the, the tango, throws out a really quick uh, illusionary orb and jaunts away. So uh, if we replay that, you can get an idea of what happened here. We'll just watch the whole thing. Gets a second hit in. Gets the kill. Not not first blood because someone had just died right before that, which it would have been first blood though. Very likely could have been in most games. Uh, only a minute and a half into the game. So Pudge, he's out for blood. He has mana. He has health points. He wants to get a kill to catch up. Like like this is a big deal. Um, if Pudge can get a kill here, he's not going to be behind. So it cancels the animation. Puck. Uh, Puck d probably decided not to go up there because he knew that he would be too predictable. Gets the tango, bottles twice, orbs away, and gets away. Goes uh, bottle crows. Um, now, really quickly about his starting items, he did have a salve, a set of tangos, three iron branches, and a mantle of intelligence. This is a decent item uh, item set to start with. Um, it allows you to play a lot more aggressive. If you don't have this much regeneration, for example, if you only have tangos, uh, you're going to have to play a lot more careful to make sure you don't die. And you're just going to farm until you get that bottle. Then that bottle is going to allow you to play a lot more aggressive. So um, that's something to keep in mind. All right, so Puck's got a regen rune now and two tangos. Bottom is missing. And honestly, right there, he probably could have been hooked. Because I don't know what he was doing, like microing the courier, I think, or something. Denied. Notice how he drops the tangos over here. He's going to have the courier pick up the tangos. And he got boots. Uh, getting boots here is actually really important. Because you, uh, you'll see in just a moment. Alright, so... A uh, couple of really important things. He was probably coordinating with Nature's Prophet to send out the ultimate. He threw out the illusionary orb to give vision on Pudge to make sure the Nature's Prophet ultimate hit him. The orb hit him as well. Um, now he jaunts here. He's got his ultimate. Pudge does not have his ultimate yet. That's an important thing to notice. So he's taking advantage of the advantage that he's already gained. He pops his dream coil, which holds him in place and will stun him if he walks out of it within six seconds. So Puck is now getting more of an advantage. He also has Waning Rift. Uh, Waning Rift is only at level one, so it's a very short duration silence, something to keep in mind. Now notice how as soon as the silence is over, when, when is Pudge most likely to hook? Like that's like the kind of thing that we're looking at right now because that's the, the, the moment you're going to want to phase shift. So Pudge is looking to hook when he has a guaranteed hook. And at this short distance, uh, Puck does not have the chance to phase shift out based on looking at his animation because there's just no way you can react that fast. But notice that he waning rifted him. It only lasts 0.75 seconds, so most likely Pudge is going to hook immediately after. So S4 predicts that, phase shifts out, dodges the hook, and because he dodges the hook, is able to get the right clicks he needs uh, to finish him off. Is under like next level Lord, plays there. Minutes. Like he knew, he just, he predicted everything Pudge was going to do and punished him for it. Radiant so really, really cool. Notice attack. how he's throwing in, initially he threw three levels of illusionary orb and now he's going to be maxing waning rift. I, don't, I think you can vary your build a little bit. Radiant structures um, are honestly, they're both really good. And if you land both of your abilities, you're going to do the same amount of damage considering you land both of your abilities. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that Illusionary Orm does cost more mana uh, to cast, whereas Waning Rift scales as you add level it up, it co increases cost, but it's still less mana. So in terms of mana per damage, your Waning Rift is going to give you the best deal. 
Like, if you can only cast one, Waning Rift is going to give you more damage. So he's he's notice what S4 is doing. He's checking other lanes. He's looking for opportunities to gank. He sees that there's two people who are low up top. Um, that's all he knows right now. Okay, so he sees Troll Warlord. Tower, he doesn't want to aggro the tower. He also wants to make sure that he lands all of his abilities. So watch how he uh, lands all the abilities. So he gets close enough, pops Waning Rift, walks up to him, and then orbs away from him. So basically, if you can be next to the person and throw out the orb, you can do the damage of the orb and also set yourself up to go to a new position. Now he's microing the illusion back away from the tower. This is going to allow his teammates to come up to the tower to, get to uh, take the tower, hopefully. So that's just an interesting little uh, fun little bit that he did there. So we're going to go ahead and speed this up again. Dyer's bottom tower is under All right, so he's setting up for a kill on Pudge. Now he's got his ultimate. He's got two levels and Waning Rift and Illusionary Orb. He's got a higher level than Pudge. Pudge does have his ultimate now, though. That's the important part. So he knows that he needs to get out of there before uh, Pudge is unsilenced. So by the time that Pudge is unsilenced, he has to get out. And he gets out just in time, if you'll notice. Radiance and Pudge at this point realizes attack. that he's dead, Are and he's not going to be able to do anything right. in response. Spirit Breaker is charging this low health puck. Now, um, you can see that he's got the Spirit Breaker charge over his head. And he hears him charging in. Face shifts just in time. Keep in mind, now this puck is like at ha uh, half HP, and he's going aggressive on a Spirit Breaker that's going underneath his tower. Um, gets the Waning Rift off. And the important thing is that he was able to land. He was First of all, he dodged the charge. He was able to land his Waning Rift, and he was able to Illusionary Orb just within uh, vision of Spirit Breaker and within distance to, to last uh, to, to hit his Waning Rift, and he didn't take Tower Aggro. So, like, all of those Do things fun. combined are all things that S4 did right there. And they're all just, like, really perfect, like, just perfectly executed. Um, we're going to go ahead and speed this up again. So right here we've got Pudge going on Crystal Maiden, uh, who was, I believe, AFK. So taking advantage of this moment, we've got a Pudge and Spirit Breaker both at full HP going on a Puck with no mana. Pudge, oh, I guess uh, Pudge isn't at full HP. He also doesn't have any mana. He just uses abilities on uh, Crystal Maiden. Nature's Prophet hits, does a lot of damage, gets some right clicks off. Now notice, what time is it? Like, like S4 is keeping a tight eye on the clock and on the rune spawning. It's it's 7:58. He's about to spawn the rune. Uh, the rune's about to spawn at either top or bottom, and this is kind of risky in my opinion. Because what if the rune spawns top? Like, you're kind of screwed, potentially. Like, at that point, you've got to run away because, look at, Spirit Breaker has a charge in two seconds. It's close range, which means that it's going to be much harder to dodge the charge using phase shift. Notice he pops the regen rune, goes uh, into uh, ether, uh Sorry, whatever it's called, um, phase shift. He phase shifts out, and so while he's phase shifted, even though it's only for 0.75 seconds, it gives him the time to regenerate his mana that he needs to fight Spirit Breaker. So he just barely has enough mana to cast a Waning Rift that prevents Spirit Breaker from casting a charge, and also gives him the HP to survive this. Like, that is just immaculate puck play. Like, you cannot... Like, like the awareness to know that there, oh, there's a rune that's going to be spawning, uh, to not just run away, really well done. He's able to uh, now illusionary orb away and get off, uh, get away from the uh, morphling and dazzle that are trying to cut him off. So again, just really smart play. Um, now he's just he says I'm just going to go home and uh, get my HP up. So we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. Alright, so he's TPing down. There's three enemies down on the bottom lane. He goes ahead and throws out the orb. This is like really, really risky. You're playing against a Spirit Breaker, Morphling, and Dazzle. Now I'm going to go ahead and slow this down. I want you to notice he casts the Dream Coil. He only gets two, but it walks into them. Walks into them, casts his Winning Rift, and casts his orb away from them now. Now that he's casting it away from them, he gets his last attack off on Dazzle. Phase shifts out, 
and gets away. Now, if he messed up on any of these things, he's dead. If he doesn't phase shift properly when Spirit Breaker charges him, he's probably dead because they're going to be able to chain him down. If uh, he doesn't get the silence on all three, Morphling would have uh, the ability to throw a waveform and does 325 damage. Puck would be dead. He's only got 190 HP. Um, if he doesn't get the silence, uh, Dazzle may be able to get a shadow, uh, shadow wave off and does 120 damage and also heals himself and uh, his allies, meaning that Dazzle wouldn't have died. So that silence secured him the kill and prevented him from dying, and the fact that he played aggressive for a moment and then orbed away was just brilliant. It was just really, really smart play. Yeah, he now has a Blink Dagger. Awesome. If you're wanting to learn how to play Puck, your item progression is going to be your starting items, usually you don't spend all your gold because you want to go for a faster than normal bottle um, than if you were to spend all your gold, for example. And then you want to go into boots, usually power treads, magic stick, and then your blink dagger. Um, you probably get your magic stick before your power treads, and then you finish up your magic wand after your power treads are done. So you get boots, stick... Uh, bottle before that, so bottle, boots, stick, magic wand, um, and then power treads, and then usually your blink dagger is next. So I I don't really recommend getting these bracers. This is our this is just the suggested items underneath puck. Um, so once you have your blink dagger, the next item is usually almost always going to be your side of the vice. This is going to allow you to disable someone for an additional 3.5 seconds and gives you tons and tons of mana and a little extra damage. So really great item. Uh, to pick up on Puck. Um, and really quickly, some other great items you can pick up are Shivas. This kind of just slows everybody. In addition to your silencing them, sticking them in one place, you also slow them and their attack speed. You also get lots of uh, armor from this. Puck doesn't have very much armor, so any armor you get is a really good thing. Um, if you want to have a good time, Dagon's all right. Um, I don't think... Okay, so this is upgradable from Aghanim Scepter. Um... I don't think it's really worth getting the Aghanims because a Sheepstick is so much better than Aghanims and the Aghanims is just really not that great because it just increases, I think, the stun and the damage for breaking. So, really not that amazing. Um, now, if you want to increase your survivability, Lincoln's is a great item as well as Yule Scepter. Um, Yule's is like a secondary phase shift. So really great, you can pop your Yules and then blink away immediately, or you can phase shift uh, if you have four levels in it, and then blink away immediately. So uh, blink is for definitely the hardcore item that you must get on, on Puck, and then there's some there's some variability after that. You can kind of branch out if they've got lots of like single target spells, like a uh, for example a a lion, a Lena with the, you know the finger of death, that kind of thing. Um, and Lincoln's will oftentimes save you from those kinds of big burst bursty kind of uh, spells. So that's when I would say maybe consider getting a Lincoln's. We're going to go ahead and fast forward this. Uh, S4 is now 8-0. This is like a perfect example of how to dominate with Puck. Uh, at this point, Puck has a blink. He has a level advantage. He throws out his ulti. Grabs Spirit Breaker and Pudge. Or maybe yeah, just... Guys. Tower, no, he's got both of them. Now, Pudge is able to predict where he's going and lands a hook. This is unfortunate for Puck because basically... Pudge is a great counter to Puck uh, if you can get the lockdown. And he's already phase shifted uh, earlier. So basically now, uh, to, to, and he phase shifted to dodge the charge, I believe, from Spirit Breaker. So uh, he doesn't have the phase shift to dodge the ultimate from Pudge. What you gonna do? Get mad or get it's a pretty big deal. But because he's able to land this um, Dream Coil, uh, they're basically going to clean up with this triple kill. Um, now this is a cool trick. What, you, what S4 just did right there is he orbed away from the pool and then blinked right after that. And he goes back into the pool while he's getting his mana regen up. And so basically he gets full mana regen, uh, like full mana topped off, and he's already at the racks. It's a really cool uh, little trick that S4 does like every time he leaves Fountain, at least when he has a blink tank. Right? Hey, forget about Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's he misses the silence, that's fallen. actually kind of a big deal. But uh, I don't think it matters. Middle tower is under because attack. Nature's Prophet's coming in. And notice the vision 
Notice the vision that the orb gave him. He's seeing all in these trees the whole way. So uh, most heroes are going to be able to get into the trees and hide and be able to, for example, TP because the right clicks don't, aren't going to work. But not this time because the orb gives you the vision, which is really important. Dyer's bottom tower is under Versus like, hey, let's go aggressive. Fox's like, yeah, I will. And then they're like, let's kill you. And they did. So, sweet, let's go ahead and move forward. I mean, this game is snowballing out of control. Oh my god. So let's go back to that uh, really quick. That's a Um, This is an example of how you can kind of gank as Puck. So we've got a Spirit Breaker charging, but he's got a ward, so he already knows Spirit Breaker's coming. Face shifts out, silences him. <laughs> Punch hooks Spirit Breaker. <laughs> and that's that. So let's just keep going, see what else we can learn from this. Blinks ahead, face shifts out, away from him. The main thing he wants to avoid there, right? Okay, so. In that instance, he's, he's playing really smart because if he, he blinked right on top of Pudge, Pudge has the potential to kill him very quickly because of Dismember. Basically, if, if Pudge gets the Dismember off, um, Puck is probably dead. He blinks, throws out the orb, gets both heroes in the orb. Right as Pudge is about to ulti, ulti him, he throws out the Waning Rift to silence them, and then Dream Coils them. So now they have nowhere to go. They're both silenced. What do you do? You really can't do anything except try to right-click. And when Pudge... Notice. And when Pudge gets unsilenced, he throws out the hook immediately. And S4... Most people would just get hit by that hook. S4 knows that silence is about to go off, and as soon as that silence goes off, he's going to throw out that hook. Because he really wants to kill his Puck. So... Predicting that, he phase shifts perfectly in time with the silence going off. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And there you go. That Pudge gets to deny himself by using Shallow Grave. It's really easy. Pulling that off. Um, like, I have watched the rest of this game. There is not much left. Um, I mean, basically, they just push the tower and farm the heroes. And you can definitely go check out this game if you feel so inclined. I will give you the match ID right here. This is match ID 369079788. If you download it right away, you can definitely go check out the replay uh, and kind of watch for yourself. Uh, you can see Puck ends up being 15 and 3. Um, let me go ahead and pause this. Um, that's basically it for my Puck How to Dominate with Puck. This is, I think, a great example of a pro player really maximizing the potential of a hero and playing extremely smart. Of course, he did mess up a few times, and it's just, it's really hard to play Puck perfectly. Um, but if you can max out, you know, the timings on your phase shift, the waning rift, silencing people at just the right times, all of that stuff, um, Puck is just an amazing hero, a amazing kind of counter initiation or an initiation. And yeah, Puck's great. And I recommend going, trying them out, and practicing for yourself. If you want to see more videos on how to dominate, I will be making more videos like this one uh, for basically all the heroes that I want to, like as I get time. And so, if you want to check out those videos, they'll be posted up on youtubecom forward slash TV. It's the YouTube channel that I uh, post stuff up to, and I also stream pretty regularly over at Twitch.tv forward slash TV. So, anyway, guys. That's it. That's the guide on how to dominate with Puck. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was long-witted and highly detailed, but that's I wanted something that would be actually really useful for everyone. So peace out, and I will see you guys next time.